Hi, I'm Brie, and in this video I'm going to look at some of the cinematic devices used in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, especially concerning the plot and themes within the movie. First of all, the plot of this movie is seemingly very original, which is probably what makes it such a cult hit, um, but I'll get to that later. Uh, in a generalized summary, it involves a man leaping through his memories desperately trying to hold on to the girl he loves. For a little more background, the main character, Joel, meets a woman named Clementine who he immediately falls in love with. After some strange interactions with other people in the film, it becomes obvious to the viewer that something is not quite right in Joel's world. Through flash forwards in the movie, we are able to piece together that Joel and Clementine had a previous relationship, and that they used a special process to have their memories erased of each other. The above would be an example of the explicit meaning of the film, a lonely guy meets a girl and falls in love with her quirks, however, the implicit meaning is much deeper. The film is almost a case study of a couple. It's split between seeing two people who seem very compatible and in love in real life versus the memories of their failing relationship. After the relationship crumbles, Joel decides to have Clementine erase, thinking it would solve all of his problems. However, it creates a new problem in which he regrets his decision too late and tries to grasp to every fragment of Clementine before he loses her completely. The film asks the question of whether our lives are about experiencing or having experienced. This is the theme we are left with, but the film takes a while to get there. In the beginning of the film, it is hard to understand what is actually happening. At first, it seems like a straightforward film about a shy and lonely man meeting a mysterious woman on Valentine's Day. However, the film takes a sharp turn as it shows, jo shows Joel crying in his car listening to Beck. You assume that his relationship with Clementine has ended, and you're not wrong. However, the timeline is off. At this point in the movie, we are shown clips of Joel's past that do not make any sense with the original introduction of the character. To further complicate the plot, Joel decides to have his memory erased, and suddenly we are thrown between his experience reliving the memories in his sleep and the real-life subplot of the men in charge of erasing the memories. In the end of the film, everything now makes sense, and, that scene, and the scene that the film opened with is completed. A movie that comes to mind with a similar setup is American Beauty. Our character and narrator, Lester, is introduced to us as he talks philosophically about his life and death. It is made known that he knows more about the plot than we do. We evaluate the life of a man who is desperately stuck and unhappy and in love with a young friend of his daughter's. Through a sequence of events, he ends up murdered and sees flashes of things that he realizes he has taken for granted. In the end, we are brought back to the opening scene of the aerial view of Lester's neighborhood, where he again talks about life and death in a way that is now understandable, knowing how he ended up dead. Another interesting parallel is the movie's namesake, a line from Alexander Pope's Eloisa to Abelard. The poem is an expose on human life and love, a tragic and forbidden romance between a woman, Eloisa, and her much older instructor, instructor Peter Abelard. The relationship is ended by Eloisa's parents, and both parties separate and begin monastic lives devoid of love. Eloisa is able to forget Abelard, however, many years later she's exposed to a work written by Abelard and his, her memory is sparked. The poem looks at the tragedy of love in much the same way as Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. We are shown two people destined to be together, torn apart by time and experience. They move on successfully until their memory is reignited and the feelings of love become more important than anything they've accomplished separately. Eloisa and Abelard and Joel and Clementine are both reunited by fate. So what we have is a story that seems very original to modern viewers, but it is very much based on a concept written by Alexander Pope in 1717. 